Hi guys, today's subject is androgenic alopecia and its possible final cure. So hair loss can occur in different forms. It can occur as androgenic alopecia, which is a condition in which the male hormone testosterone being produced in your testicles is being transformed into dihydrotestosterone, its active form. Uh, which is a completely physiological normal process but in those suffering from androgenic alopecia the um, the hair follicles are sensible to DHT which uh, attaches to the hair follicle preventing it from accessing the blood supply so the hair follicle would undergo follicular damage and uh, will slowly die and fall out as much as you may hate androgenic alopecia, it is not actually the worst form of hair loss. In my opinion, the worst case of hair loss is uh, alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune condition in which um, basically the immune system attacks the hair follicles and um, it can lead even to alopecia totalis or alopecia universalis, which uh, in which uh, the immune system attacks all of the hair follicles in the body uh, like we have in our uh, hair loss fellow youtuber Dr. Gary Linkop. You kind of kept my hair messy so you can see the amount of scalp that is uh, showing through and there's a massive area of uh, missing hair there on my left side you can see that the eyebrows have significantly thinned out and the frequency of androgenic alopecia is about 50% of men at the age of 30 years old, 25% uh, of men at the age of 20, and less than 5% of men before the age of 20 years old. Some of the conventional treatments for androgenic alopecia include 5-alpha reductase inhibitors such as finasteride and minoxidil. We know that 5-alpha uh, reductase is the basically the enzyme that is responsible for converting the testosterone into DHT, its active form. And uh, by blocking this enzyme, we can, we can indirectly block DHT and uh, prevent it from damaging the, the hair follicle. We also have um, hair stimulation therapy. So we have in, in this pharmaceutical uh, in this pharmaceutical class we have stemoxidine and uh, FDA approved minoxidil. But when it comes to dealing with your hair loss, basically the gold standard here is having a hair transplantation. Uh, you know, hair transplants are amazing. They're beautiful, but they're but they bring their own limitations. Uh, you know, not everyone is good candidate for hair transplant and even in those who are good candidates, we know that surgeons basically mimic and create an artificial illusion of density, not real density. So patients often uh, are being left with uh, unsatisfactory results. And basically this is why researchers have been looking for alternatives, uh, alternative solutions for hair loss. And uh, on the head of these researchers, we have Dr. Tsuji, which, uh, which honestly have, become, have gained a lot of popularity in the past few years among hair loss sufferers, uh, me being one of them. So today we're going to discuss a study published by Dr. Takashi Tsuji and his team in February 2021, which uh, basically brought us one step further in understanding the mechanism of hair regeneration and uh, thus giving us the ability to potentially multiply hair uh, grafts in vitro studies and uh, given patients unlimited donor supply. So the way scientists are able to do this, and yes, they were able to do this in uh, vitro studies as we are going to discuss uh, in this video, the way the, the scientists have been able to do it is uh, basically with the help of stem cells. So what are stem cells? Stem cells are actually cells that can actually multiply into whatever type of cell they're programmed to turn into. For instance, all of our blood cells are derived from uh, hemat hematopoietic stem cells, uh, which are multipotent stem cells. 
we say multipotent because uh, they can only turn into one class or one family of cells in the body pluripotent stem cells on the other hand can turn into whatever type of cell in the body and induced pluripotent stem cells are basically stem cells that have been genetically reprogrammed by scientists to an embryonic stem cell like state so with these basic principles in mind let's go ahead and uh, read the article the title of the study is the expansion and characterization of uh, epithelial stem cells with potential for cy cyclical hair regeneration so the authors of the study begin by citing that um, organogenesis only occur during embryonic development except for hair follicles uh, if you go if you guys don't know hair follicles are considered as a whole organ uh, every hair follicle is considered as a as a whole organ and uh, in the telogen phase when the hair follicle dies and then um, comes the anagen phase that is considered as organogenesis so um, they were saying that the hair follicle resident uh, epithelial stem cells uh, which are responsible for repetitive hair follicle regeneration themselves uh, are not fully characterized and um, basically this is the uh, purpose of the study is to characterize the stem cells um, responsible for hair regeneration and um, the second purpose which is uh, cited in the second part of the study is to optimize a medium through which uh, these stem cells can um, have their um, regenerative pur purposes activated so if you don't if you guys don't know uh, the word medium in biology just means uh, environment so if we uh, if we put some cells in a medium that contains collagen that collagen is uh, just called medium so we already know that um, that the CD34 uh, marker, CD49F marker and the Intergram Beta 5 marker which are just glycoproteins uh, that are uh, that we can find on the surface of a cell um, we call them stem cell markers so um, we know that these uh, CD34 plus cells, CD49F plus cells and Intergram Beta 5 cells have uh, multipotency and functional significance for continual hair regeneration uh, we also know that these cells containing these markers are usually found on the uppermost area of the bulge region which is found on this figure and we also know guys that these uh, cells are usually surrounded by tennyson in mice and also uh, tennyson is found in humans and you know very interesting here the authors uh, did say that uh, therefore adult hair follicle stem cells could be promising candidate for or organ regenerative medicine and uh, a method to efficiently expand hair follicle stem cells that have the ability to sustainably induce hair follicle regeneration is required uh, which is the purpose of the purpose of the study so uh, as you may assume guys this is not just about hair it is uh, a completely new aspect of medicine it's called regenerative medicine and uh, by achieving the hair follicle regeneration in vitro studies we can uh, ultimately find out a way to uh, regenerate a whole tissue or a whole organ for uh, potential patients who would need that organ for instance um, if you have a patient that has um, uh, that has for example hepatic cirrhosis or um, a heart failure and that uh, needs an urgent organ transplantation he would just wait for uh, years to get that organ from a donor but with this regenerative medicine they can just uh, harvest some stem cells from his tissues and create that organ in in laboratory 
Um, so guys, the authors were uh, citing a previous study, so they said by mimicking this molecular mechanism, a previous study demonstrated that um, CD34 plus cells and CD49F plus cells, uh, which are, again, uh, which we can find on the upper bone region and the hair follicle, uh, isolated from uh, adult mouse back skin can be amplified by fold in 14 days by 3D culture using these factors and collagen. So we already know that these uh, cells uh, play a, a huge important viral role in hair regeneration so we already established that in previous studies but um, uh, this time the, uh, the authors of the study wanted to check uh, yet another marker which is the ITG beta 5 marker. We found that um, the comparison of cell population that are cultured in different conditions reveal that among the CD34 uh, and CD49F double positive cell populations, those who had the intrigen beta 5 uh, factor in them or marker in them were enriched in cell cultures. Um, basically what that means guys that um, these results indicate that the CD34 plus cells, the CD49 F plus and the intrigen beta 5 plus cells compose the key cell population required for sustainable hair cycles and uh, regeneration of hair follicles from bioengineered uh, hair follicle germ. So, to identify hair follicle stem cells that are indispensable for long-term cyclical hair follicle regeneration, the authors of the study optimized uh, culture conditions under which uh, hair follicle stem cells basically can maintain or lose their capacity to cyclically induce hair regeneration. And then they compared the cell populations that were cultured in these different conditions and uh, analyzing the data, we were able to find which of these following cells are concretely um, uh, playing a big role in hair regeneration. Uh, they examined more than 220 combination of, of extracellular matrix and uh, previously defined cytokine insights and uh, on day 6 in culture, single epithelial cells subjected to uh, the 3D culture with Nuggen FGF7, FGF10, Sonic Headcock, Agonist, and EGF. And don't worry about these these names, guys. These are just factors. Let's just call this a NFFSE medium. So uh, on day six, in culture in uh, the NFFSE medium uh, combined with collagen, uh, we got. A formation of a round shaped spheroid uh, of varying uh, sizes and highest uh, highest spheroid forming efficiency at 32 uh, percent and uh, an amplification rate of 198 percent and to put it in comparison the authors of the study uh, tried to examine whether plate epithelial stem cells can also expand in these conditions so they uh, cultured epithelial cells isolated from this time telogen back skin uh, including interfollicular epithelial cells and uh, pillage hair follicle stem cells. Uh, similar to the vibrocell bulge cells, single back skin cells uh, gave rise to spheroids uh, with a rough surface at a spheroid forming efficiency at 23% and uh, an amplification rate of 7.3, only 7.3% when we had uh, 198 uh, on the vibrates hairs. But the authors of the study said that uh, the difference between vibrosubor cells and uh, the back skin cells may actually be due to the percentage of hair cycle stage of hair vocal stem cells in each cell population. So basically they concluded that this change may be just uh, negligible because it may be 
due to the experiment conditions. We also found out that the NFFSE medium conditions drastically increase the proportion of the CD34 plus cells and the CD49F plus cells by 61% for Vibrisa uh, and 70.8% 70, 70 for back skin cells in intelligent stage. But the authors of the study didn't stop there to examine whether cells cultured in the NFFSE medium contained uh, maintain their undifferentiated status and multipotency, they further developed cultural conditions which allowed, um, which basically allowed them to modify the fate of the hair follicle stem cells. Uh, they found out, found out that they found out that the withdrawal of the EGF factor from the NFFSE medium. Uh, and the addition of the Wnt pathway ligand and the Note ligand and the TGF beta inhibitor resulted in decrease in colony forming efficiency, colony size and amplification rate and percentage of the CD34 plus and CD49 F plus cells. And uh, just to put you in perspective, guys, the withdrawal of the EGF factor from the previously NFFSE medium. Uh, gives us a new medium called NFFS. We would roll just the final E. And uh, the addition of the wind pathway and the note ligand and the TGF beta inhibitor gives us the new medium called NFFSWN medium. And uh, to further examine the multipotency of the NFFSE cultured cells, the authors of the study passed them into either the NFFSE medium or uh, an in, in differentiation medium. They, um, they found out that the NFFSE cultured cells showed decreased in colony size and also decreased in CD34 plus CD49 F plus cell populations and increased and the expression of committed stem cell markers such as the OGR5 and BLIMP1 uh, factors. Taken together, these results suggest that uh, the hair follicle stem cells maintain a relatively undifferentiated status in the NFFSE medium. By three weeks after transplantation of bioengineered uh, germ generated from the NFFSE medium, NFFS medium and the NFFSWN cultured cells, the eruption and growth of hair shafts were observed at frequency of 54.5% uh, for the NFFSE medium, 61.2% for the NFFS uh, medium and 0% uh, for the NFFSWN medium. Uh, it's important also to note that the generated hair shafts show the correct morphological and histological structures including the hair cortex and six layers of thin cuticles under the light microscope and also under an electronic microscope. Long-term analysis revealed that 81% of hair follicle generation from uh, the NFFSE cultured cells showed repetitive hair cycles of at least three guys. We have at least three hair cycles in the long term with similar hair cycle duration to that uh, of the hair follicles we generated from freshly isolated Bosch epithelial cells. In clear contrast, 79 percent of generation of hair follicles from NFFS cultured cells showed fewer than two cycles of hair regeneration. These results suggest that cells cultured in the NFFSE conditions were uh, pretty rich in, the, in hair follicles processing the potential to cyclically undergo hair regeneration a hair cycle in addition to self renewal capacity. And uh, the last study the authors have uh, done 
was um, was to determine the characteristics and draw of the integrin beta 5 um, marker so to examine the functional significance of the CD34 plus and CD49 F plus uh, integrin beta 5 plus cells they took advantage of hair reconstitution assay which can uh, pretty much reliably um, eliminate target cells they performed a hair reconstitution assay utilizing the NFFSE cultured pelage epithelial cells following the fax isolation hair reconstitution um, they found out that um, Concerning the CD34+, CD49F+, and the integrin beta-5- minus cells, there was a um, hair regeneration frequency at 43%, uh, where, uh, where when we have a integrin beta-5+, plus marker, we had a hair regeneration frequency of 72%. The percentage of hair regenerated hair follicles showing at least three cycles of hair cycle drastically increased from 13.3% in the group with the integrin beta uh, 5 uh, minus to 80% with the group with uh, integrin beta 5 plus cells. So these taken together, the results clearly demonstrated that the integrin beta 5 cells uh, among the CD34 and CD49 F plus cells uh, are multipotent and pretty much viral for long long term cyclical induction of the uh, of hair regeneration of the hair follicle. So to conclude, guys, in the study, the authors have found that uh, CD34 plus, CD49 F plus, and the integrin beta 5 plus cells have the ability to induce cyclical hair regeneration and hair reconstitution assay indicating um, that the presence of functional heterogeneity among cultured uh, CD34 plus and CD49 F plus cells um, functional functional heterogeneity just means uh, f functional differences between the cells so based on these facts and uh, the data from the study the authors sort of speculated that the integrin beta 5 plus cells found in the upper part of the native hair follicles directly or indirectly play an important role in uh, long term cyclically and uh, hair regeneration uh, to be honest with you guys a lot of study previous studies have demonstrated the huge role the cd34 plus and cd49 f plus cells play in hair regeneration uh, but this is pretty much the first study that indicated the big role the integrin beta 5 marker has in uh, hair cycle and hair regeneration. So to conclude the study, the authors concluded that the function and mechanism of the integrin beta 5 and tennyson in stem cell maintenance and cell kinetics should be further studied. Nevertheless, the cultural conditions identified in this study enable us to expand and control the differentiation status of the hair follicle stem cells, providing a platform for understanding the mechanism under underlying the maintenance of the cyclical hair follicle regenerative potential of hair follicle stem cells.